even better. Oh my god. deal what's the deal uh today just about to hit the gym i'm not gonna take the camera in the gym today because be too much going on in this gym so I'm not gonna be a good get good shots of what i want y'all to see anyway you know whenever i do these gym workouts i'll be wanting you guys to just see my workouts and for um you know players to have different ideas for workouts um, I'm really big on working out by myself. I love working out by myself. You'll find me on the outside court any day. Because I think so many people make excuses on they, why they can't work out. I don't have a gym. I don't have a ball. But you can get a ball from Mac, um, McDonald's. From Walmart for like $10. Every city has a recreational court. And... As many workouts you can do to get better. And I find myself, when I shoot on double rims, it helps my shot anyway. So I don't have no problem with it. But I'm about to go work out. I got to go pick up some clothes. Some people ordered some clothes over the weekend, some truth gear over the weekend. Excited about that. Um, got the new drive fits coming. The Make Them Pay Sports Drive Fits. You just play. I make them pay. Uh, that's coming soon. This is not the shirt because the print didn't come out how I wanted it to come out. So I wanted it bigger. So yeah, I actually got to find a screen printer to make this bigger so it can come out how I want it to come out. I don't really like this, but it's going to be the concept. You just play, I make them pay. That's going to be on makeempaysports.com. Um, yeah, and I'm doing the make them pay Mondays. So, I got to do that today. That video is going to be up today. Um, besides that, working on, got two or three calls, working with people on their um, strategies for their, for their businesses. And I'm always trying to improve mine. So, that's about it. Truth Daily, baby. Ask me anything you want to ask me. Anything. What makes me different than any other ball player is that I'm not just a ball player. I'm more than just a ball player. I pride myself in that. And when it comes down to just sports, from a basketball player point of view, I think it's no answer for me. If you want to press me, I go by you, you back up off me, I'm going to shoot it. I can post you up, you double me, I can pass. There's nothing you can do. So that, I think that what makes me different than most players. And that makes me sound like I'm the perfect player. So they would say, like, why are you not in the league? But the reason why I'm not in the league has nothing to do with my talent. There's guys in the league that I'm way better than. that a lot of dudes are, are better than. But it's all about opportunities. And I got a few opportunities. I didn't take advantage of them. It wasn't because I wasn't prepared, though. It's just because the ball just didn't roll my way. Okay. My second question is for you. <clears throat> My second question is, why do you feel like guys lose focus? What makes them settle? What makes them give up on their dreams? Then what makes guys want to become the best? Does it have to do with your mental? Does it have to do with I think it's just structure. If you look at most of the successful guys in the NBA, most of them are married. At least it was like that two, three years ago. I ain't really checked it this year, but most of them are married. Or if they're not married, they have a strong team around them. You got the Carmelos, LeBron, D. Wade, even D. Rose at his prime. He was with his girl, I think. Um, all those dudes, Matt Westbrook, all them dudes, Steph. 
All them dudes are married. And, you know, whenever you got a strong team around you, that's when you got the guys like the Clays, the James Hardens, uh, those guys like that. And they got a lot of other guys that's real talented, but notice they can't never get, get over the hump because they're not focused. And most of their focus go to women. Believe it or not, a lot of athletes entertain women that, has, that bring them no value and waste so much time by the time their career over, they'd be like, what was I doing? Well, I know what you was doing. You was messing with all these girls that that just wasted your time, sp spent your money, and even dudes, other other homeboys that they can't get rid of. It's just a whole bunch of wasted time. Same time and effort you're putting in a woman that you don't care about. Now, if you care about it, okay, I understand. But if this is a girl you just want to have sex with, you better off paying a prostitute because you can pay and get exactly what you want. But if you got to manipulate a woman just to have sex, that's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy. It's sickening, too. <laughs> but you can use that time to work on your game, to research other people's games, to eat healthy, to sleep right, sleep, get a, uh, a nice sleep rhythm. Uh, just you'll be way more productive as a person when you, have, when you have structure in your life. And I think that separates the good players from the bad players. So back to the women and men. You're pretty much saying that these women out here could pretty much break you. These women out here can mess up your image. These women out here can make you broke. These women out here pretty much are no good for you. So why does guys continue to entertain those women? Validation. Groupies that so and so they're called. Validation. Just so the homeboys are like, oh, you got a bad chick? Which is not really a bad chick. She's just a chick that decided to buy some breasts, buy some butt, blow up her lips, put a pound of makeup on, and she got 100,000 followers because she's selling sex. So <laughs> it looks like she's a bad chick, but she really has nothing. And guys get validation out of that their homeboys be like, oh my God, like she's bad. And just to hear that, that strokes most of those guys' egos. Crazy, right? What strokes your ego, Mr. Tyron? What strokes my ego? When someone says you really helped me get started. <laughs> when someone says you helped me change your life. I helped change their life. That's what it. Everything else I expect. I know I'm an unbelievable score. It's nothing you can do. Make them pay. <laughs> I know I'm an unbelievable friend. So that does nothing for me. What strokes my ego is whenever I make money outside of basketball. And when people say I help, I help them change their life. So where did truth come from? Truth came from... One day when I was with the Pacers, me and Lance Stevenson was on the same team and we was going at the other team. And he said that he was going to lead the summer league in scoring. I was like, okay, I hear him. And every play in practice, he played like that. And I would hear him say underneath his breath, he's from New York, so he had an accent. He never said he the truth, like we would say. He kept saying, I'm the truth, nigga. I'm like, whoa. And it, it resonated with me. And I used to always say, man, I'm the truth. And so when I put the acronyms together, I was like, I've been taking things my whole life. So the T can stand for take. And I like, I had to take, whenever I was taking, I was gaining respect. So the R stand for respect. And it took me a long time to get where I needed to get to. That's why the U stand for until, means, which means the journey. And the F was freedom. That's what I have now, freedom. To be able to do whatever I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. And that's how you live a truth life. Make sense? That makes a lot of sense. What what motivated you to start playing basketball? Was there a special someone in your life that you grew up watching and no, saying, I was no, just like that? No, because your Michael Jordan was my teammate. My favorite player was Tracy McGrady. So it wasn't like, and he got hurt, so he never really lived up to what he was supposed to be. He kept getting injured. But... I just used to play against all the OGs in my neighborhood. My mama bought me a gold because we would tear up the brick house, 
by playing baseball, fast pitch, and hit the ball on the bricks. So she bought me a goal in the whole neighborhood would just play at my house. And most of the time it was guys that was like 21, 22 years old, and I was 14, 15, and I beat up on them. And I was like, oh, well, I know I can do this to my, with my classmates, but I kept getting cut. I got cut twice. And it wasn't because of my talent. It was because I wasn't popular. I was quiet. And that motivated me. Every time I, they told me I wasn't good enough, it motivated me to play. And that's why I came over making pay. Because I wanted to prove everybody that I was not, not, better, not better than them, but I was way better than them. So... To where you are now with your confidence because a lot of people don't have confidence to say I'm going to get up I'm going to keep pushing the people who got cut they kind of give up the people who get injured they kind of just you know get down so what happened to you to where you are confident because I have a reason why it's not that I'm confident I just I have a structure I know what I want to do at first it was, okay, I want to play in the NBA. I didn't get drafted, so I'm going to go overseas and I'm going to play to go to get back to the NBA or get in the EuroLeague. Now I see the EuroLeague is, is, is not much possible. The NBA still has a chance, but that motivates me to want to still play in the NBA. What motivates me really and truly now to run truth and to still be the best basketball player I can be is... I want to make as much money outside of basketball. I want to make the same amount of money outside of basketball that I am playing basketball. So to do that, I have to grind. I have to wake up every morning and really grind because I don't want to be forced to go overseas. I want to go overseas because I want to go overseas. To end this interview with you, Mr. Tyron, are you talking what, like a reporter? What message do you have to your audience? What one message do you have to people who will be watching this? We was born to live, not to work. Do what you love to do and make money from it. Cash in on your passion and live every day to make them pay. That's it. Every day I just want to make my doubt. I like to shit on my doubts. That's me, and I don't want to be doing anything for money because money is a green piece of paper that you can get if you put your mind to it. But the message I would say is just live every day like it's your last and live to live. Don't live to work. Great. That's a, that's a great message. You like that? that? Stop calling me Mr. Tyron. You sound like a damn interview. <laughs>